Hi, I'm Carolyn Young. Actually, it's Carolyn Bernard Young. The Bernard's very important because that ties me back to the Choctaw tribe. So I like to go by Carolyn Bernard Young. I'm a Choctaw potter, a registered artist, and I'm so proud to be a part of that tribe. I grew up in Fort Worth. My mother was Choctaw, but she never really talked about it. And uh, so it wasn't until after she died that I found the, a copy of the, the uh, Dawes Roll in her papers and, that had my grandmother on it. And my grandmother was the granddaughter of survivors of the Trail of Tears. So it wasn't until I married Sam in 2011 that I actually took the time to gather the paperwork and get my tribal registration. It was important to me, but I had spent so many years in a very high stress job that I just didn't have time to do anything. I was traveling, I was on the road all the time. As a matter of fact, that's how I got into pottery, sort of accidentally. I was uh, looking for a creative outlet to relieve stress, and someone said, take a pottery class. So I did, and the very first time I put my hands in clay, I knew that's what I was meant to do. I fell in love right then and there, and that was about 22 years ago now. So I began taking classes everywhere I could. I wanted to learn everything I could about making pottery. And one of the very first classes I took was about uh, scratching or carving in the clay to uh, reveal the contrasting clay beneath a colored slip. And I was so intrigued with that. Um, I've never been able to draw. I'm not, I don't have that natural talent. My siblings did, but I never did, so I never thought of myself as an artist. So, but this scratching and carving thing was very intriguing to me. And the thing that came to me to put, in, to carve into clay was petroglyphs and Native American symbols. And so I started out almost immediately doing that and have done so all these years. Um, but it wasn't until Sam and I married in 2011 that my work really changed. It began to reflect my heritage in a way that it hadn't before. Maybe it was a combination of his support and encouragement. Maybe it was the fact that I got my registration with the Choctaw tribe and I felt more authentic. Um, but carving into the clay, it feeds my soul. And seeing the bold patterns that emerge, the contrast between the clay and the black slip, makes my heart sing. I have to do it. I love doing it every day. Throwing a pot on the wheel, it's like magic. Seeing the pot emerge from that ball of clay, it's the most wonderful feeling in the world. And then to get to sit here in my studio and look out the window and see all the birds. Um, I'm a lucky girl. I get to do that every day. It took me a while. Uh, I didn't get to retire and do this full time until uh, 2009. But when Sam and I married and we moved out here to Weatherford, the first thing he did the day we moved in was pour the slab for the studio. So his support has been incredible. Um, he um, has encouraged me every step of the way. He, he always puts my art first. Uh, I don't think you can ask for more of a, a supportive husband than I have. So I'm very pleased to have this gorgeous studio in this tranquil place to create my pots every day. I was a quality engineer for a local aerospace company and uh, started to work there in 1978. And that's when I met Sam, as a matter of fact. And I got an opportunity to go overseas to work in Europe. I, was, I lived in Belgium for a couple of years. And um, he didn't ask me not to go, so I went. And it was years later that we got back together. But um, when I came back to the States after living in Europe for a while, I became a part of the International Quality Group, and uh, over time that entailed 
traveling to a lot of different places, but at, in the early 90s, my job was to travel to the Middle East a lot. It was Israel, Egypt, Turkey, and um, that's very stressful for a woman. So um, that's what brought me to Clay. And so I spent a lot of time in the Ankara Museum studying the pottery, the ancient pottery, um, which is not unlike the ancient Choctaw pottery. Um, and then I visited several potters in Turkey, in Ankara and Kayseri and some other small towns. I was allowed to use their um, wheels that are foot driven. Um, and. Um, I didn't get to fire anything over there, but I did get to play. But I was very early on in my, I had just been exposed to pottery. Um, the colors that I use, I try to get the brightest, most saturated colors that I can find to use on the inside of the pot. I love the idea that when someone picks up a pot and looks inside, they're surprised with this bright color. Um, those are those really saturated bright colors are commercial glazes because I've not found a, a way to make my own glazes and get that vibrant color. I've always loved color, um, so it was important to me to make my pots have something different about them that gave a surprise. Um, when I do large pots, like with a, a large bottom, a platter or something like that, I also carve the bottom so that you get that surprise on the bottom. Oh, I have big ideas. I, I want to do a large wall piece um, honoring the preservation of the Choctaw Pony. I've really become interested in that and so my first step was to learn to draw a horse. So I've been drawing horses, 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 horses. And I, I actually did my first um, horses on some pottery uh, this last go around. I did a couple platters and some mugs and vases and the horses are getting better. But what I would like to do is to be able to do something that along the lines of a, a mural or a relief that um, has some movement that's not uh, not physical movement but movement in the clay that is more than just a flat piece of clay with carving on it but maybe some ra the horses be raised or the mountains or something along the lines of uh, what is I don't know how to describe it exactly but it's in my head and I'm hoping to have that ready for the museum show in uh, August um, and then I also have an idea for some vertical wall pieces that will be like box tiles. So they'll be, they won't be flat, they'll have sides and they will hang on the wall as independent pieces and be completely different and yet connected in some way. And not necessarily with carving, but um, there may be carving on some pieces and not on others. But it'll be more of a, a tribal look without being as graphic as my pots are now. So those are the things that I, that I see in my future. I haven't figured out how to get them here yet, but I'm working on them.